welcome to another video about the create mod in Minecraft. So today I thought we'd take a little look at these. This is the wonderful schematic cannon, which is basically how you can replicate your builds or any contraptions or anything like that that you've made so you don't have to keep on remaking them from scratch. You can use this to sort of clone them somewhere in your world. First thing to point out is that schematic cannons are actually really cheap to make. If we take a little look over on JEI, uh, everything that is schematic cannon related. So the cannon itself, the most expensive thing you're going to need is going to be these two blocks of iron, a schematic table for putting your schematics together. As you can see, it's just wood and stone, and then these are just paper and a little bit of dye, and I guess you're going to have to go and kill a chicken at some point. Once you've got all your bits and pieces though, then we can take a look at how to actually put together a schematic. So if we just come around here and we have a look at this little house that you can see just here, it's a simple little house, but perhaps I am super pleased with it and I want to make another one right there. Well, the first thing you do have to do is make the building. Schematic cannons aren't going to make things for you. It can only replicate something. It's not got that much imagination. But we're going to turn this little building here into a schematic so that we can replicate it just here. For that, you will need the schematic and quill. This is how you write schematics rather than put them together or put them into the canon. This is what you're going to have to start off with. And you can see here, I've got this little sort of blue box wafting around in front of me that's attached to my cursor. And that is where it's trying to decide where do you actually want to make your schematic. And what you need to do is if you find the corner of your building, so for example, just here, this is a block that is right on the edge in both directions, nothing is sticking out as we can see there. So this is the lowest and furthest point. If I right click just there, you will see it says first position set. So that is just to say this is where your schematic is going to start from. And you can see now when I move my blue box is expanding out with me wherever my cursor goes. So if I point it at the ground, I can stretch it out along the ground. If I point it up, it's going to cling to the building, as you can see. If I put it over there towards my sort of little schematic cannon temple that I've made, you can see that it's going wherever the cursor points. So we can come round to the other corner, just around here. And there we go, we have covered the entire lower base of this building. If from there I right click again, you will see second position is set. And now I can run away and leave it. And that blue box is going to stay there, thinking that this is how big we want our schematic to be, which we don't. We want it to cover the whole building. I don't really just want the lowest floor of it. Now, if I come over to this side just here and we get a little bit closer, it's a little bit challenging to see. But as I move my cursor between the panels, so this is the right hand panel and the top panel, hopefully you can see there that it just changes fractionally as we do so. So on this side, it's quite clear. And as I move up, hopefully you can see it gets just a little bit paler. And that's just to indicate where your cursor is pointing on this schematic box. And what this means, though, is that we can change the dimensions of this box quite easily to cover the entirety of our building. All we need to do is have our cursor on the panel that we wish to control. So that's this top panel here. So not on this lower panel, this top one, this top face of this blue box. Then if I press control, and I use the scroll wheel on my mouse and I go up, it will go up a single block, as you can see. So it's getting a little bit bigger each time. I can fly up and again, press control and then scroll wheel on the mouse and we can lift this box up. We can change it in all different directions. Let's say I didn't really want those shrubby bits down there in there. I just wanted the building. What I can do is I can come over to this panel on this side. So my cursor is pointing into this part of the box. Again, hold down control. And then using the scroll wheel on the mouse, we can move it around and decide exactly where we want it to be. So let's say I'm going to cut those little bits of bushes out there. I can come back up the top again and we can move it just up so that it's covering the whole of the building. I can see everything is now nestled quite neatly within this blue box. And from here, what I can do is if I just still with my schematic and quill in my hand if I then just point it anywhere else that's not actually on the box itself and I right click it will bring me up this little screen here so that I can now name this building that I'm trying to make a schematic of so we'll just call it well, maybe not oos we'll call it house go down to the bottom and you can either save it save and upload immediately so that's straight away into a little schematic if you wanted to use it now for now I'm just going to save it and obviously if you discard you'll just start again so if I click save, that is now saved as an MBT file. It is now a schematic, so it can be made somewhere else. To do that, though, we now need to pop down our little table. So if you take our little schematic table and we pop him down just there, 
then if we click on it, we can go into its interface, and there it is, House NBT, that is the one which I want. So you can see I've also got a windmill stored in here as well. That's the same windmill that I've just done a tutorial for too. But this is the little house that we're after. So what we need to do is we'll take an empty schematic. We can place that into the box just on the left hand side. Say, OK, yep, that's the one we want. And that has now been written. So it's not an empty schematic now. It is a full schematic. And you can see there it is telling you which one it has written. So in yellow it is saying house NBT. That's the little schematic that we've just made. So we can take him out and then we'll come out of this screen. And when we hover over our box, our little schematic, sorry, it brings up the box to show the dimensions of what we are creating. So we know what we're creating. We're making this little house here, and this little box is the same size as that one that we made for the house. So this is just showing us where the schematic is. It's just going to give you an idea of where you want to place it. So if I just sort of move this box around, I can decide where I want to put it. I'm going to pop it back in this little box just here. So if it's placed just there, I can then right click with my mouse, and there we go. It has made a little replica of our house for you. Now, this doesn't actually exist at this point. We can just walk right through it. We can move it around still. It is not a solid object. It is just saying, is this where you want to build this? To which my answer is, no. Actually, I don't want it to look exactly the same as the other one. I'd quite like it to be up a little bit and maybe facing in a different direction. And that's where all of these controls that you can see on the screen at the moment come into play. So those are going to let us rearrange our schematic, and in order to get into them, you'll need to hold down the left alt on your keyboard, as it does let you know in its little instructions just there. So when you press that down, they will highlight so that you can get into them. You do need to keep that pressed while you're in, otherwise you'll go back out again. But once in, we can have a little look at what controls we've got available to us. So we can scroll around. We can see we've got, first of all, move X and Z. So that's literally going to let us move our schematic along the X and Z axis which just means forwards and backwards, left and right. So if we've got that one highlighted at the moment, you can see we've got that one highlighted. It's the one that's showing. Now, when I press Control, and again, I scroll on my mouse, I can push this around based on which of the panels I'm looking at. So if I look at the panel that's facing forwards and I push it away, it moves in that direction, or I can pull him back again. Again, if I switch to this little panel, this face of this cube which I'm looking at, when I scroll my wheel, I can pull him back in this direction. So we'll put him back in the same place that he was. I only want him to be lifted up a little bit. So again, if we hold down that Alt button, we can then scroll along one, move in the Y axis. That's just up and down. So again, come out of there. And if we hold down Control, we can move him up or we can move him down. Let's stick him up a block. There we go. From there again, we'll go back into our Alt so that we can have a look. Positioning, that is just if you want to go back to moving it around, using the box. If you think, oh, do you know, I really don't want it there. I want it way over in the distance instead. What we can do is we can point anywhere, and then when you right click, it will just appear there instead, and it's gone from where it was before. We're now working all the way over there, which isn't what we want. Let's bring him back again. Of course, because it was on position, it has now repositioned itself to the ground, because that is what it is snapping to, and so we will have to put it back up in the air again. There we go. Nice and easy. So from here, though, I want to spin him around. So we have got either rotate or mirror. So rotate is when we're literally going to flip it around in a circle, holding down control and using that scroll wheel again. We can spin him around. Well, that'll do. Let's face him in that direction instead. He can face this other little house. And instead, I think I want him to be maybe the opposite way around. Maybe I don't want them to be completely the same. I don't want the door here. I want it to be here instead. That's what we're going to use the mirror one for. So I'm holding Alt and then scrolling across again. You can see we go to mirror and that is going to flip the whole thing around. So you can see it puts this little line there for you when you look at your schematic. So it says, this is where I'm going to flip it. So if I have the line going through the center of it and then I press control, and scroll on the wheel, you can see it flips around. So it's changing the direction of the building each time I do that. So if I come back to this side, I'll just flip it again so it's a bit easier to see. So you can see that the door has now come onto this side instead. And so obviously, if you've got the little, little mirror line that are going down the center, that's where it's gonna flip around. Hold down control and scroll, we'll flip him around that way. Why not? Let's have him face, facing that way. And from here, the last one that we can look at on our directions, on our 
way of moving our little schematic around is to hold down our alt and look at the last one. And this is purely for create. It won't work if you're in survival because it assumes that you've already got all of the blocks available to you and it allows you to literally just print this house somewhere. So if we clicked on that one and we said OK, it would become a solid object that's not just a schematic. It would actually be a house that is now placed there with all of the blocks in it for you. Which obviously in survival isn't going to work because that would be cheating. And so, pretending that we were in survival at the moment, what we need to do instead is we now need the schematic cannon. Once you've got your schematic arranged where you want it to, you don't need to click OK or anything, it knows where you want to place it. And so what we need to do though is we need to load this into the cannon itself. So I've got a little cannon down here, as you can see, and when I right click on him, it brings up the cannon's interface. So up at the top in this corner, it says it needs gunpowder. That is what it uses to fire each of the little blocks. So you do need to load it with gunpowder in order for it to work. And then this is where we're going to make a little checklist in just a second. And right now, this is what we are interested in, this little idle screen. So if I take the schematic that we've been working with, my little house NBT, and I pop him in there, it is now going to tell me one, I can't fire anything because I'm out of gunpowder, but it is ready to go. It knows that there is a schematic that is loaded. It knows where it's going to be firing. From here, though, we come out of that screen. You'll notice that your schematic has actually disappeared, so we can't see it at the moment because it's loaded into the cannon instead. But we need to know what we actually used in order to make this building. So we need to find out what kind of little bits and pieces, what blocks, what ingredients, essentially, we need in order to make this little recipe. So what we'll do for that, though, is we will come in to our little screen. You'll need to go, obviously, you need to make one if you're in the survival mode. But you're going to need either a book or you're going to need a clipboard. Which one of these you use is very much dependent on what you've got. They're about equal in terms of their use. The clipboard uses a piece of andesite alloy, which might be annoying if you're trying to conserve it, whereas the book needs leather, which is pretty useless if you haven't got anything to kill for it. But we can use these now in order to find out what bits we need to make our building. So what we can do, we'll come back into our schematic cannon, and we're going to take the clipboard first, and we're just going to place it in this little block up here. It will now write onto the clipboard, as you saw just there, to say what ingredients we need. We can bring that one down, and then we'll do the same thing for the book as well, just so that we can compare the two. There we go, that's written a little book for us. It's now looking a lot like a enchanted book, and that's given us a material checklist. As you can see, they are highlighted down the bottom. So when I now bring my book open, we'll go to that one first, and we right-click on it and have a look. It gives us literally an ingredients list of everything that we need for our little building. So we can see we're going to need 22 pieces of andesite, we need a basin, 10 bits of gravel, we're going to need a mechanical press, we're going to need a warped door, and we're going to need some oxidised cut copper stairs. We'll come out of that one though, and we'll have a little look at how the clipboard is a little bit different from the book. So if we just open that one up, you can see, for one thing that makes it a little bit nicer is that it gives you the images of what you're looking for. So especially if you're new to the game and you're thinking, what on earth is an oxidised cut copper stair? That's what it looks like, just to make it a little bit easier for you to go and find that. But again, it just gives us a, exactly the same list as the book does. It is literally just an ingredients list. What is nice about the clipboard compared to the book is the fact that you can highlight things and then move them on if you don't want to use them. So if you're looking through all this and you're thinking, oh gosh, a warp door, I've never been to the nether, there's no way I can get that. You can say, OK, warp door, I've ticked you, and now I can say, raise, goodbye, warp door, I'm not going to try and get you anymore. And it also means that because you can tick these things off, you can say, OK, I've got my andesite, I've got my basin, I've got my gravel. It's just a nice little visual reminder, really, to tell you where you're up to with all of your ingredients gathering. But that is the big thing about this, though, with the schematic cannon, is that we do now have to actually go and get these ingredients. In order to do that, you're going to need to put them into a chest next to your cannon. What we'll do is we'll just come and get a little chest here, and then if you place it, it needs to be in line with your cannon, right beside it. You can put one on either side, so I could put a little double chest there and there, and it can read out of both of these chests in order to pick up what items it needs. So what I'll do is I'll just fill up this little chest with all of the items that we need, and then we'll have a go at setting him off. Okay, so I have a little look in this chest now. I believe that is everything that I need in order to make this little house. What I can do just to check is you can come back into your cannon again. And what we'll do is we'll reload the little checklist. So we'll take our clipboard, pop him in there. It will reload it again, take him back out. and We'll have another little look. Right, so all the ones in green have been ticked off. So those are the ones that we have done. 
And it seems I have missed one polished andesite. We still need that just to one of them. And there's the warped door again, just in case we wanted to add that one back in. I still don't want you, so go away. So what we'll do now is we'll just add that one polished andesite back in. There he is. Add him in. And now when we go in and we reload that clipboard, everything should be showing up as green, with the exception of the warped door that I'm not bothering with. There we go. Everything is green. Right, so last thing we need to do now is we just need to get this loaded up with some gunpowder. Okay, so once we've gone out into the world and we've got ourselves some gunpowder, it actually loads quite a lot. So if I put just one little piece in like that, I can then hover over this little section. And I can see how many shots it's got left. That is effectively how many blocks can it fire. So at this point, it can add 400 blocks roughly onto our little schematic. But we'll pop the whole little stack in there. Why not? It is now able to shoot 25,000 blocks. So it's getting towards being quite a large build. But the important thing is we are ready to go. So we know it's going to be building our little schematic over in there. If you wanted to check where it was, you can take the schematic back out again at this point, come out of this screen, and it'll just show you again where it was that you're building it. Yep, that's still where I want it. Brilliant. Let's just pop him back in our cannon. And now when we press go, it will start firing for us. So we will just set him off, and have a little watch, and we'll let him build up our building for us. First thing you'll notice, well, what do you know? The gravel blocks will still obey gravity because they are now becoming solid blocks in the world. And so we're going to have to fix that bit up. That's fine. And it's going to build up the entire building, though, from the base up towards the top. There, all done. Right, so we can come down, we can get rid of these wretched little gravels that were never supposed to be there. Get rid of those, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. As you can see, it has not built a floor for our house because we did not ask it to. It will only put in the blocks that you have asked that were part of the schematic. It's not going to magically invent a floor for you or anything like that if you've got it floating. So we'll need to have some little bits and pieces finished off on it. But it has done its job. It has made us a replica of the house that was right next to it. There you go. I've just popped a little tiny cobble plinth underneath it just so that our tiny little house here has something to stand on so that it's looking a little bit more solid. And the last thing we need to go through for our schematic cannon is the different ways in which it prints things. So I've set up a little experiment you can see just here. I've got these little identical structures, each made out of solid blocks in the form of some calcite bricks, a non-solid block in the form of this amethyst bud, and a block that contains data in the form of this chest, although at the moment they don't contain anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace each of them with this. This is just a completely random little thing. We've got solid blocks down at the bottom. We've got leaf blocks, which create doesn't actually treat like a solid block. It treats them as a non-solid block. We've also got lecterns, which are a non-solid block, and then we've got more solids up at the top. And there's a little hole just here as well. And what I've done is I've made a little schematic of this. I've named it Cover. I've loaded it onto four completely separate little schematics, and I've loaded them into these cannons, as you see. And what we'll do is we will set each one of them off using one of the print settings, which are just down at the bottom here. So if we open up this little interface, you can see you've got four different print settings that you can set this cannon off to do. It's also got two on the side, these two miscellaneous ones. Skip missing blocks, fairly self-explanatory. It will just skip any blocks that it hasn't got and go on to the next one. And this is an important one which should be checked, which is protect block entities. This will make sure that it doesn't destroy anything that can hold data, such as one of the chests. So we should find all the chests over there are going to survive. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to set this first cannon onto the first one of the print settings. That's going to be don't replace any solid blocks. We'll set that one off. Then we'll move on to our second cannon. We're gonna set this one off to replace solid with solid only. You'll notice when they're checked because they've got the little white box just above them. We'll set you off. Our third cannon, we're gonna set that one off to what is actually the default setting. So that is replace solid with any. And our fourth cannon, which we are going to set to the last of the settings, which is replace solids with empties. And then we'll just have a little look at what we end up with. And 
And there we go. Right, so let's have a little look at what our first cannon was. So remember, we set this one to don't replace solid blocks. And so that is exactly what it has done. All of the solid blocks that were from our original structure have been completely preserved. Ignore them. <laughs> so everything that was solid has been preserved. All of these calcite blocks, none of them have been touched. Everything that was an air block, on the other hand, has been replaced with something from our cover. So it's put the lecterns in, it's put the leaves in, it has also replaced our amethyst block that was just there with leaves because it is a non-solid block. And so it's taken that one away, it has only preserved the solid blocks. It's also kept our chest for us because that shouldn't have been destroyed as it is a data holding entity. This is a particularly useful setting when you're trying to put trees, for example, around buildings where you want there to be leaves and wood, but you don't want it to remove any of the building blocks. On to our second cannon. This is the one that we set to replace solid with solid. So what it has done is it has replaced all of the solid blocks. So where there was calcite bricks down at the bottom from our original structure, they have now been replaced with the solid blocks from our cover. So we've ended up with these deep slate blocks down at the bottom, but you'll notice it has left these calcite pillars, and that is because Create does not treat the leaf blocks as a solid block, and so it's not used those to replace them. And so we've ended up with this slightly strange arrangement where the sol some of the solids have replaced and some of them haven't been. This is probably the setting that I use least. It's the one that tends to cause the most unusual placements. It has also, though, of course, got rid of our amethyst block, and it has kept our chest block. Okay, so moving on to our third cannon. Remembering that this is the default setting, so this is replace solids with anything, and it has replaced everything that it can replace. It has built our cover, our little section over there. No matter what else was here, it has decided to build it like for like, block for block. And so we've got all of the deep slate blocks, we've got all of the leaf blocks, we've got all of our lecterns, it has replaced everything that it can, it can't replace the chest, so that is still there. But of course, our poor little amethyst has gone. And last but by no means least, we have our fourth cannon, and this remember that we set to replace solids with empties. Now at first look, you might think, well these two are exactly the same, it's just replaced all of the blocks that were on our original structure with what was from our little cover structure that we've got. But there's one major difference, and that is that only one of these has created an air gap for itself. So if we look at the original cover over here, you can see it's got these two little blocks missing up at the top. Now on the third setting of the cannon, it did not try to recreate those air blocks. It has left two blocks from the original structure in place, whereas on the fourth setting it has replaced the air blocks. So what that means is, if you're making a building, for example, and you're setting it back into a hill, then the fourth setting on the cannon will remove all of the dirt and stone blocks that would otherwise be appearing inside your building, whereas the third setting won't. That will leave them in there and you'll have to replace them for yourself. So it is very much a case of where are you going to make your building, but by far I would say the most useful one is probably the one on the end. This is the setting that I use most frequently, just because normally if you've got air blocks in a building, you want them there. You don't want it to be replaced with dirt. But that is everything that there is for now, going on to this little kind of beginner's guide to our schematic cannons. It depends really on what you want to create with how you're going to be setting your printing settings, but initially I would either stick with the default or go with option number four if you've got air blocks in your building. Overall though, I hope you'll agree with me that the schematic cannon is a really useful little bit of kit to have in your world, just so that you can build anything that you want to in creative, and then you can bring it over to your survival world with only the hassle of having to find the blocks without having to do the rest of the building again, so you're not having to build the whole thing twice. But I also hope you've enjoyed this little video. Happy Minecrafting everybody, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!